Hi guys and welcome back to part 3. We're going to be gluing the Rhino together now. I'm going to be using Revel Contactica plastic glue. I strongly recommend using plastic glue on all of your plastic miniatures as opposed to super glue. For me personally the benefits are the glue is going to hold much better than super glue as when you put two plastic parts together that have had plastic cement glue put on them they'll actually melt together and form a permanent bond unlike super glue. Also if you actually paint your miniatures before you assemble the model if you actually use super glue the glue will attach to the paint and not to the model so there won't be a bond there at all whereas the plastic glue will literally melt straight through the paint and uh, form a permanent bond. I place a firm grip on both sides of the Rhino as a glue cures. It's to ensure that the Rhino door doesn't flop down unnecessarily once built. Here you can see that the door's pretty firm. I'm starting to add the pre-shading to the outside of the Rhino now using Badger Militaire's Raven Black. I have taken a lot of footage of me pre-shading the outside of the Rhino. It may come across as a little boring and I'll try and talk as little as I can over it, maybe try and uh, put a different soundtrack on to uh, stop sending you to sleep. But I think it's important if you're new to airbrushing just to see what you can achieve with pre-shading. What I'll start doing is alternating between high pass sweeps with the airbrush to get more of a feathered finish to the pre-shading on the larger panels and as I get closely and tighter to the sharp edges of all the panels I'll get much closer and lay down a much thicker darker black line. Here I've sped up the footage now guys just so you can see exactly how the pre-shading gets done. Pay particular note to how close I get in with the airbrush when I'm trying to do the tight sharp edges of the panels and how I'll bring the airbrush further away when I want a more of a smooth transition. Once you really get going with the pre-shading it starts to become really fun. I start looking at all areas of the tank where I think a shadow could be naturally formed on a tank like adding a shadow to the back of the rhino door there. When working on tighter lines for pre-shading I always make sure I've got a piece of paper at hand so I can start off the painting with the airbrush on the paper first to make sure that the paint's flowing correctly.
the last stage of the pre-shading involves tidying up all of the areas where I feel that I've gone a bit OTT with the pre-shading and also some sloppy lines where I've made some mistakes. It also helps add highlights. We're going to start adding colour to the Rhino now using Badger's Minitaire Ghost Tint Green. I have to add guys that the ghost tints from Badger are a pre-shader's dream come true. If you're actually new to airbrushing, these ghost tints are absolutely fantastic. What they enable you to do is paint in multiple passes over your pre-shading. And what that actually does is it enables you to keep the pre-shading intact, control exactly how much of the shadow and how much of the highlights are showing. And you also can control how dark and light the tone is, which is very, very difficult to do using the normal acrylic paints. So if I can recommend any new paints uh, out there, guys, and I, I really do mean this, I'd say go and pick up the, the ghost tints from Badger. You can see on the tank as the color starting to build up. It takes four or five passes of the ghost tint green to end up with this overall color. After allowing the model to dry for several hours, it's ready for a pin wash. There's also a really cool bonus that you get with these ghost tints. They actually dry with a gloss finish, perfect for a pin wash. I create the pin wash by using mixed black oil paint and mixing it with odorless turpentine. As you can see as I'm applying the wash, the properties of the gloss finish paint and the oil wash it's just fantastic, it does all the hard work for you. I'll touch a panel and the oil wash will go straight into the recess where I want it to. Don't be afraid to make a bit of a mess here guys. As you can see I'm a little bit sloppy and you can see some staining starting to appear on some of the panels. We're going to deal with that in a moment. Removing the excess stains and pin wash is very very simple to do guys. It's just a case of adding some neat odorless turpentine to the model and wiping away those marks and stains. That's the end of part 3 guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe and please stick around to the end of the video where I link to the final part in the series.